Hi, fellow Kids Inc. fans. Welcome to the Kids Inc. podcast. I am your host, Susan Yeager, and this is episode seven, part two. In this episode, we continue our chat with the fabulous Jerry Shirell. Jerry, I can't thank you enough for taking so much time to talk with us and share so many stories from your days on Kids Incorporated. This interview has just been incredible. So with that being said, here's a little more of it. <laughs> what do you remember? Um, let's start with the show first, and then we'll go yeah. outside the show. Yeah. What were some of your highlights from the series? Uh, mm-hmm. Favorite episodes, favorite songs, favorite memories? I think... Um... I, I definitely have favorite episodes. And, and as I always say to my friends, whenever you get into one of those favorite albums ever, or favorites, mm-hmm. I'm always like, I have two. Sorry, I can't have just one. I have two. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have two. I really loved X Marks the Spot, mm-hmm. which is where we went on the treasure hunt, yeah. uh, which was for Renee's birthday. Um, and I loved uh, the one that was called Some Like It Hot which was where Rasan and I tried to get into the Sayyidi Garrett music. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I also enjoyed the new image when we had, um, when I wanted our band to have a new image. Yes. Um, or the yes. braids and things like that. And, and, and honestly, when I look back on it, I, I liked the ones that were little, that, that were obviously based in reality. Right. Because for me, as a 14 year old boy, uh, I went into this show and I honestly thought, even based on the first two episodes we shot, which were leader of the pack where the guy tries to take over my band, mm-hmm. my band. <laughs> and um, yeah, you finally had to let all the girls in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and then the second one we had taped that week, this is why I think we did them in twos. The second one we had taped that week uh, was the graffiti artist, mm-hmm. okay? And I I remember taping those and I was thinking like, oh, this show is kind of going to be like a band wanting to make it and just how we're just in a small town and this small fictional town and and things are going to happen to us, but still it's really going to be about us um, wanting to be famous, I thought. Mm. So I thought this is going to be a half hour fame. This is going to be a younger fame. Right. And as time went on and the scripts came in, and there were uh, leprechauns and spacemen and yeah. robots and yeah. us going to outer space and a flying bike. Right, right, the super bike, yes. I, um, I started to get really disappointed mm-hmm. and really, um, really angry. Mm. And I remember it now being, and I remember, and I was very vocal about it. Mm. I wasn't, um, I still am. I'm kind of like my, my, one of my theme songs is the authority song, John Cougar. Mm-hmm. I fight authority. Authority always wins. Right. Right. That's kind of me. Yeah. And I wasn't by any means a brat and I wasn't by any means ungrateful, but I was questioning. Mm-hmm. And here I am 14 and I'm questioning, you know, that's TV execs and TV writers and Tommy Lynch and you right, know, like, right. what is this? What are you doing to me? Why am I here and I'm singing to a robot and talking to an alien right what are these shows what's going on what do we do so i i was very frustrated very frustrated and there are some times you can see where i'm not much of the story because of that frustration and because it maybe looked ridiculous for me not only to be six to 12 inches taller than these kids <laughs> but right. to then be involved with the space alien or the leprechaun or the flying bike so that in those episodes oh mickey's singing like the three concert songs right right yeah because yeah. i wasn't about the dialogue or the you know yeah i never noticed but, that now that yeah, now that you say I, that i'm gonna have to go back and, and watch yeah yeah that makes i was sense. i was i was pretty vocal and for me it wasn't about like artistry and what did i know at 14 i was no i was certainly no kind of artist per se right i was just disappointed right and i think personally just as a 14 year old boy perhaps embarrassed yeah and i know, yeah. That, and I know that rasan has talked about this too you know him being 10 years old and having to put on you know the superman leotard right and, right and sing you know, so so I became almost like embarrassed that I was like on a baby show right. as a 14 year old boy. 
Right. Right. You know, well, and so, Moosey addressed that too. You know, Moosey said, I had to get into the mindset of this is a kid's show, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I have a ton of nieces and nephews and um, varying ages and, mm-hmm. and they do theater and things like that. But, you know, they, they're conscious of that. How's this going to look at school and, you know, right. the rules and yeah. So did the show start airing while you were still in production? And with that thought in mind of being the 14 year old, what was the reaction you were getting uh, both worldwide from fans and at your school, you know? Well, I think it, um, it was airing while we were still taping. I, I do remember that a bit. Um, I also remember having to go to school on the set and, and doing my best to avoid it mm-hmm. um, as best as I could escape from the teacher that was on set. Cause I just, oh. I've, never, I've never liked, I've never liked school. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, Jerry's actually, hiding. We're trying to do school. Uh, Jerry's oh hiding. no, Jerry's hiding. Oh, where's Jerry? Oh, he turned in his homework already. He's he's yeah. on the set. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I would do. I go hang on the set or hang out in the production office. I want to be with yeah. the adults. Right. I, right. I really want to be with the adults. And um, uh, I, I do remember it airing then. And I was in school, but here's the thing: I went to a school called Valley Professional, mm-hmm. and it was for kids who were in the business. And legally, uh, at least in California, you had to go to school from 8.30 until 11.30 every day, which is mm-hmm. the same thing with being on the set. We had to have three hours of school a day. And so I would go to Valley Professional from 8.30 until 11.30 every day. And after that, you would uh, have time for lessons and auditions. Right. And I remember I was definitely at Valley Professional during that time. And I had classmates, um, you know, there were combined classes. So like seventh and eighth were together. Or even sometimes like seventh and ninth were together and the room would be divided and the teacher would spend time over here and the teacher would spend time over here with the ninth graders and because i had it was very small probably 10 kids per class but i had classes with and i was friends with um people like jason bateman and 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 moon unit zappa and dweezil zappa went there a lot of ice skaters went there who were um competing for the olympics Uh, christopher bowman who went on to compete and, and win a medal um because you would go ice skating at five in the morning and then you'd go to school and you go back to ice skating. And I go back to ice skating. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, I was friends with and took classes with Janet Jackson. Oh uh, yeah, which was great. I was, I was a good friend of hers and her friend Melanie, who actually sings and wrote on um, the Control album. Wow. They did that together while I was still friends with them a little after, a little after high school. Crazy. And um, yeah, I, I, I just had a great time there. Uh, I was not then, to answer your question, I was not teased because I was right. with other actors and singers. Right, and right. And yeah. So it wasn't a thing. It did become a thing later because, uh, so for seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th grade, I went to Valley Professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, for 11th and 12th, I went to Taft High School in Woodland Hills and it was a public school. Mm. And during that time, it was on the Disney Channel. And of course, I'm going into a school with kids who are my age who had seen it when it was in syndication as well. Right. And yes, I got teased the hell out of. Because yep. Disney re-aired your episode. Disney re-aired my episode right. for a good two right. or three years. Uh, and, and also, these kids could have remembered me from two, three years prior when right. it was right. in syndication. And of course, I went to the big um, public school with, you know, 800 in my graduating class and had to join the choir, you know, so, so, so right. people knew me. And, right. and people who, who were mean were mean and she's on the effect on me, you know, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it was, you know, yeah, it happened. So by the time it was, you know, I thought you were aged out, honestly, I thought, you know, that they let you go, but by that point, was it okay with you? Like if this is going to continue on down this road and I'm so glad you got out before they went to Disney because then it got worse, you know, <laughs> but like, yes. 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 Um, it's, it's so were you okay with it? Um, I, it was interesting to me to listen to Tommy's uh, interview um, and to hear um, the business behind the business of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, and to hear him say that I got a bum deal mm-hmm. uh, in leaving, that was nice to hear. Good. Because, you know, I did and I didn't. Mm-hmm. I did because I feel I aged out. So I imagine the adults around there felt I aged out. I imagine producers felt I aged out. I was taller. The difference between the pilot 
in the first episode of Kids Incorporated, if you just look at pictures, I had changed so much. Oh, gosh. Let alone my voice. Right. Well, right. Of course, going through the change mm. during my season of Kids Incorporated mm. is going through the change. I never so, noticed that. Yeah. Never so noticed. There, so there yeah. are times I would sing down here because I couldn't sing up here. And there are times that I would sing up there because I'd yeah. be able to. But it was a, it was changing right during that Michael season. Cruz is and like, we don't know what we're getting today. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and, no, and I'll, I'll get to that after this. Let me finish the sure. thought about leaving the show. So, so in leaving, I remember, of course, not loving where the show was and that I was on a true kids show. I felt mm -hmm. it was... Um, Sesame Street with music instead of a half hour fame comedy, right? right. Like, the, like the TV show Fame, but a half hour comedy. So, and as I said, I was vocal about that. Um, uh, and again, not in a bad way. So, so when I was kind of asked to leave, I wasn't really told per se. The way that I envision it <laughs> was I think that they probably told my agent, my agent told my mom and knowing my mom the way that she is and probably knowing Tommy the way he is. My mom probably called Tommy and said, I'm not telling him. Yeah, yeah. You tell you him. You tell him, yeah. You don't want to worry you know, because Tommy did call me. Oh, wow. So yeah. he called me and he, I remember him, I remember where I was sitting, I remember saying, Jared, you know, I think, I think we're making some changes next season. And I, and I think, you know, if it's okay with you, we're, we're, we're going to move on from you for, for this next season, you know, and, and, you know, we're going to recast and, you know, you're older now and, and, you know, it's a young show and, you know, you got so tall now and, yeah. Um, and, and, he, and he was like, are you okay with that? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I think I saw wow. it. I yeah. think I saw it coming. I was not blind to the menudo factor. I was not blind to what was going on. I mean, I was very media savvy when I was younger and very, right. uh, would very much um, read. Um, I would I, literally, like I was a crazy kid that would read the trades and would read Billboard and I would read album notes and know uh, what songwriter wrote this and what producer produced this and who was hot at the time. And I would read the charts. And so I knew about menudo and I knew that story. And I, it's not like they hit me over with a log when, when this was right, coming right, out. right. Didn't come um, completely I, out. I, I, and, and I think it's one of those. It's the number one. If I knew then what I know now, if I knew then what I know now, I would have shut up and not said anything when I was there. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I probably would have had better conversations about it. Mm -hmm. And I probably would have. And I kind of vibe from what Tommy was saying the other day. Or at least I. I thought this way in my head when he was talking to you um how it wasn't the right way to do it and how they did it and how they did it to the fans mm -hmm. and how um it affected the show and i think there was a way either to oh let's keep jerry for half the season and ease him off or hey let's have jerry in the first two episodes and then he moves that would be a good idea something and yeah. that's kind of what I vibe from him when he was talking to me the other day right. that, that he wishes something like that would have happened instead of just. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Know, and, I, and I would have liked that. I would have liked that because I'll tell you, I didn't watch much of the show after that, but I did watch the first episode of right. Ryan then join. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah. and, I, and I was like, and I, because I remember, I think they had to like call to get the rights to use my pictures on it. And my mom asked me, she didn't just say yes. Yeah, she yeah. Like, okay yeah. if we use photos of you or videos of you for this first episode. And I was, I, and I said, yeah, mom, that's fine. So I watched it to see what they were using. And, right. and I thought, oh, this kind of sucks that this character is going away this way. Oh, well, yeah, you know, again, at yeah. that time I'm 14 plus or probably 15 and was moving on with life. <laughs> now that you say that though, that would have been really cool to bring you back somewhere down the line. It's just like, hey, yeah. he's in town visiting. You know, yeah. that would have been something, really cool. Something. I think that that, I, that would have been nice and it would have been, it would have been, it would have been interesting and it certainly for me now i've worked as a publicist for mm -hmm. since i was 21 in this industry mm -hmm. it would have been great pr for the show to, to bring me back right right on to season two back. or three or four or something you know it would yes. have been, been nice I, I missed a couple of the questions i meant to ask um you guys had incredible guest stars david mm -hmm. hasselhoff saida mm -hmm. garrett mm -hmm. 
uh, as someone who was so interested in the business at such a young age, what did you learn from them? And like, was that an added excitement when they came on? It, it, it was because we were, we were in a bubble. We didn't know much, of course. We're, we're, first of all, we are kids, we are children. You know, there are some that are literally nine years old. Yeah. Uh, so we're just in a bubble. We're just recording our songs and singing and dancing and oh, it's on TV and oh, oh, oh it's on in 10 in the morning in Los Angeles. Oh, my cousin in Pennsylvania watches it the day before at eight in the morning. And wow. we're learning and doing the learning, um, learning these things and, and, you know, from across the country of where our relatives were watching because it was syndicated yeah, you right. at 10 o'clock Sunday morning across the nation. It was yeah. different, different times. on. My like, friend Sarah just told me that she had to set her alarm for 6.30 every Saturday morning because it was on at 6.30 a.m. So yep, yeah. yep. that was dedication. Yep, yep. But, yeah. And Tommy will tell you, but we sold it in that market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. matter what time slot, he sold it. We didn't care, we were on. Yeah, <laughs> We were yeah. on, right, right. Um, um, so what we're saying, oh, the guest stars. Okay, so I, I, I think David Hasselhoff came on first. And uh, David Hasselhoff came on like a storm. Like this guy is, was a star. I mean, he was yeah. just like Mr. Showbiz and hey kids and how you doing? And I'm David <laughs> Hasselhoff and just, I mean, he is what you would expect. And so we were of course just like, oh my God, this is Knight Rider. This is, yeah. this is amazing. And then we're like, David Hasselhoff sings, I guess. And so we had to got to sit, dance along, but he came in and he probably did maybe two hours with us and he was gone. You know, because wow. um, I think he taped a couple scenes and then he taped his one concert number that we that we did with him. Um, so that was really fast, but he was nice and signed autographs. And of course, my brother being, um, like I said, seven, eight, nine, mm -hmm. um, he was of course really obsessed with Knight Rider because like, this was like not Baywatch. This was like Knight Rider time. Right, right. And, and so he was obsessed with Knight Rider and he signed toys for my brother and stuff. And Aww. it was just great. And my brother came, brother came to a lot of the tapings when we would do concert stuff. We'll see him somewhere in the audience. Um, and um, because my mother couldn't leave him home alone. So he would right, come, to right. work with, would come to work with his brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lots of kids grew up on that set, you know? <laughs> really yeah. did, really did. We all did. I mean, he was, and, and of course, he, being in, back to being in Utah, he and Stacy were the same age. Mm -hmm. So they were playing together. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, they were playing together and like Marta and I and the dancers were hanging out and Renee would fly between the two of us and stuff. So yeah, just, yeah. It was interesting to have that different age um, dynamic too, to see like who was close and who was hanging out with who. And right, it was, right. It was very, very interesting. But then uh, Saida Garrett, so Saida Garrett comes on and I think someone on the show worked on her music video. Mm. And we of course wanted a, a pop star to come on and it turned out that, oh, well, we'll, I just, I can't remember who it was. It might've been our set designer or something said, I, I just worked on this music video with this woman and she's got a great voice and she should come in and she'll be our pop star. So that's how she was on our show. Nice. And, and sang the song, Do You Want It Right Now? Um, which was from a movie, I think called Fast Forward. I can't believe I'm getting all this information right now for you. I remember that um, soundtrack. That was a great yeah. soundtrack. Great soundtrack. So she was yeah. on the soundtrack and that was her single. Uh, and I think Taylor Dane later covered the song, Do You Want It Right Now? But so, so Saida wasn't the Saida Man of the Mirror at the time who wrote right, Man of the Mirror right. you know, or, or sang with Michael. Um, but she, we knew that she was an amazing singer and we had such a great time with her. Um, and that whole episode, Rasan and I loved because, um, ooh, I don't want to get choked up. <laughs> <laughs> if you cry, I'm going to cry. So don't cry. No. Um, ugh. Don't cry. Uh, Rasan and I were so close. Ugh. God, this is stupid. <laughs> no, this is yes, amazing. Yes. I don't know. But you're going to make me cry. <laughs> we were so close because, um, because we were the two guys in the front. And um, we connected immediately on music and immediately on um, R&B music. Loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved R&B, pop R&B. And always we'd be talking about like Patti LaBelle and Jennifer Holliday and all these amazing singers that we loved. 
And um, I just remember us doing that episode together and we had so much fun. Because it was just um, uh. That's amazing that, that you remember fun. it with that much fondness. I love it. I think because he didn't have anyone, you know? Yeah. And he was thrust into this when I look back. And um, we just immediately connected, like I said, on music. And it's interesting because Marta was definitely into like new wave and um, culture club and um, uh, Duran Duran, you know, boy groups from the UK, Wham. Right. And um, Rasan and I were really into pop and R&B music. And there were times that we would try to get some songs that were perhaps too R and B into the show. Yeah, yeah. And just we we just failed. I mean, the, the the guy, the music supervisor would always be open to to ideas, of course, of what we want to sing. He right. had so many slots to fill. And I remember there was a time, and this poor guy, I wish I remembered his name, but I came in there with a box of records one day. And looking back on it now, I'm like, who is this little shit that's going to try and do my job for me? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I came with excitement of, I know a lot of music. I'm obsessed with music. Right. I think that Stacy would sound great on this song. That's what I knew in my head at 14. That's what I right. should do then. And so I come in with this box of music. And this guy's totally into it. And he was probably, he was probably a young kid. He was made, if he was 28 or 30, I'd, I'd be surprised. And, um, we just start listening to records and he's listening to everything. And I start singing along and Rasan pops in and I put on the Pointer Sisters Neutron Dance. Oh my goodness. And Rasan and I just start wailing and I'm singing, <laughs> you know, I, 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 can, I can sing the Ruth Pointer parts because yeah. she's the lower Pointer Sister yeah. and he comes in on top. And so we sing that and Tommy hears us and I remember him coming by and he's like, okay, We'll put that one in the show, write that one down. <laughs> and there were just other songs. I think I brought in like um, Olivia Newton John Living in Desperate Times. And oh, and that was a good one. Marta ended up singing that. Um, I brought in You Should Hear She Talks About You because yeah. I had done it in the Roxy show and because I was such and still am a huge Melissa Manchester fan. I was like, I'd like to do this one. And I sat there and I I think we ended up choosing like 10 songs from this pile that I brought in. Wow. Um, and, and one of them also being like, I, I always thought, and I still do, it's funny, it popped on just the other day. And I was like, this is just one of the greatest songs in the history of all time is Just Once, uh, which is Quincy Jones yes. and James Ingram. And I remember I played that. And I was like, I don't know how you could ever find space for this in this show, but it's just one of the best songs ever in the whole world. And I love this song. I, I don't care who sings it. Right. It's Somebody's got to sing show. it. Yeah. And then they did it with Renee and Stacey singing oh, it. Together. Amazing. So, yeah, I just remember, you know, so the song and I really connected on music. We really had a fun time doing that, that episode because the dialogue was based. So we had dialogue together. It was just me and him. The dress, the when we would get dressed for a show, we didn't really have dress rehearsal days. You would just get right. to close the day up. So when he and I do the thing where we dress up like we're workmen and they put the mustache yeah. on us yeah. and they put the stuff on us and they make us hold the ladder, that's the first time we're dressed that way. Oh, we're wow. The camera. When they put us in woman's clothes, yeah. that's the first time <laughs> we're that way. So a lot of times you'll see us laugh or you, you'll see us eyeball each other. Or I look at moments and I see during the X marks the spot and Renee's opening the gifts. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we're all seeing after, you know, mm -hmm. days of rehearsing this dialogue and fake opening the teddy bear, what this teddy bear is really going to look like, what wow. this book is going to look like. So we were, especially Rasan would all, you, you can watch these episodes and see Rasan break all the time. Well, there when you these, said that, I just, I just had this vision in my head, like, uh, in the Saidi Garrett episode, like he grabs your shirt or something and you guys are just like laughing. Yeah. It's hysterical. Because, I because just we're just like, laughing. what the hell are we doing? Like we were just having a blast. Yeah. After a whole, you know, week or so or less of just reading the lines and like, yeah. Yeah. it is different, you know, I'm not, I, we're not Shakespeare here, but it is different when you put on the outfit and become something different and you're be able to laugh with your scene partner and 
and have mm-hmm. those moments. I, I remember, like you say, Rasan reaching for my shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There are moments too, I think it might be an expert to spot where he, I mean, I think he did it often. He would play with um, Renee's hair and fix mm-hmm. it. Just like while she's talking and the, and the shots on her. And he would yeah. see his hand <laughs> reach in and just like, <laughs> hair a bit. Like, you got a hair out of place, yeah. <laughs> so great. It's so real. So funny. Yeah, yeah. The good news, guys, is this is far from over. Tune into episode eight for even more with Jerry Shirell. We'll see you there. But in the meantime, be good to others, be good to yourself, and may the joy, excitement, hope, and magic that was Kids Incorporated Find a way into your life every day. See you next time. Two quick shout outs before I wrap up this episode. First, as always, much love to Eris at kidsinc.us or kidsincorporated.us or on YouTube, just Kids Incorporated. Eris has been a huge help with all things, putting this podcast together, giving me openings, and uh, of course, doing all the research on YouTube. So Eris, thank you. A second big shout out is to my friend, Alice. She sent me this wonderful gift. It's a Kids Inc. podcast Tumblr made by Fangirl Creative. You can find Fangirl Creative on Twitter and I think other social medias. But I'm going to say start with the Twitter, Fangirl Creative. And I love this. Let me show it again just because it is so gosh darn cute. So she made this great Tumblr for the Kids Inc. podcast. And uh, everybody go check out Fangirl Creative. And thank you, Alice. That was such a great gift. And uh, maybe we'll have these up for sale soon. So keep an eye out for those. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys, we would love for you to check us out on social media. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast, twitter.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast, and Instagram.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast. Hope to see you there.